Okay, for the next couple of days, um, the project expands from two balls and the ping pong ball, and the net ball to three. So three balls the steel ball bearing, ping pong ball, the nerf ball. The project expands from horizontal circulation to vertical circulation. We're going to be adding on to the existing model. We're building up from it. So the existing model, which primarily deals with horizontal circulation, is going to have like a foundation. So we build up from it. Two things you want to do to that foam model in the next couple of days. You want to glue everything down, and you may want to put laminates and cardboard underneath it. So it has a strong cardboard base underneath the foam. Reason why is you may want to put dowel rod through it in order to secure new things above it. Okay. That cardboard construct that emerges from this foam construct comes from a few things. It comes from uh, a series of thoughts about what different kinds of moves the ball could do. The steel ball, ping pong ball, the foam ball. Di different types of activities or verbiage that the ball is expressing. And I, in, in the packet, it refers to this, it links to it. Um, an artist named Richard Serra, who wrote a long list of verbs that he uses to help motivate his sculpture. That's linked to the problem statement. There's also a copy of it in, in Canvas. Long list of different verbs. Reflect, draw. Rotate, shear, um, diffuse, different things that, that the ball could be influenced by or do. So there's a so it's a challenge to try to think of the ball doing one of these verbs or performing one of these verbs. The verbs could also come from your text. You have a list of verbs in your invisible city text that might be interesting for the ball to respond to as well. And it's just a matter of reading through your text again and looking for the verbs, not the nouns, not the adjectives, but the verbs that are in your text that might create an activity for the ball to do. These are like the parkour sports, right, that the ball performs. I've given you a sheet of vellum for you to start to sketch out what those might be, what those could be. So you take some scrap cardboard or scrap material and you start to build study models that test the potential for the ball to do something. There might be a cup, there might be a rubber band, something like that. Here's an example of a deflection point, catching it in a, into a cup and then dropping it out. These are just a few things that previous projects have done to try to test what the ball can do relative to these different words. And I've written the words in here, bounce, catch, deflect, catch, rotate, drop, descend, deflect, turn, drop, contain, reflect, filter different verbs that are from the list that could become interesting things for the ball to do. Whether that be the steel ball, the foam ball. And uh, so over the next couple of days, building a series of small study models that, that test what that ball can do. A reflection, a drop, a subtractor, hinge, something interesting. If you go to page two, uh, those are things that you can work on together in your groups. You can challenge each other, help each other, test each other to, to start to make some study models that, 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 um, that test a particular activity that the ball can do. It could be simply, something as simple as a as a staircase. Then sketch them out on the vellum. What kinds of drawings do you see here? The nomenclature of drawings. And plan, section, plus some diagramming language, right? <laughs> so this is that fusion between the orthographic drawings and the diagram. It's that fusion. So there's some diagramming language in here, but these are plans, sections, overhead view, that sort of thing. Laid out on this sheet of vellum. These are, what, that's six possible ideas. You may not build all of those. Those may not come to fruition, but they're just ideas that you're dealing with right now that the ball could do. But here's the trick. 
here it gets interesting. I've given you a, a sheet of trace paper the same size. And you lay that over. You lay that over. And whatever the diagrams have become, you're going to make a, a grid that responds to them. Simplifying grid laid over these drawings. So this one's pretty easy, right? I just lay a lay a, I can interpret that as a grid. This diagram becomes a very clear, present, easy grid. So I'm just laying that over. And that's a grid, that's a grid simplification of that diagram. This one's a little more complicated. This, there's one down, there's there's things down here I can respond to. Pieces I can respond to here. So whatever that diagram was, you're now simplifying that, simplifying the ordering system of that diagram in a grid. I've got a diagonal here, so that has to be simplified into a grid as well. So this is a grid simplification of that diagram. So we've got different quadrants of things starting to happen. This other one is very really simple too. Right? It's just a simple, straightforward reduction. Now I have a decision to make. What do I do with this line here? Do I take it, do I leave it there? Or do I take it all the way through? Do I stop it? Your choice. It's all your choice. I might start to carry over some lines here as well. Since I tend to sketch in a grid anyway. All these stair steps, oh my, a lot of stuff here, right? A lot of things to simplify, respond to. Maybe this becomes a collection of really narrow rectangles that are extracted, simplified from this grid. And you stop them where you think they need to stop. Or you make some longer, whatever. This one up here, this is this radial one. That's really complicated. So I've got to go up, maybe there, maybe there, maybe there. And I just leave that one big old piece. I come up here and I look for the orientation lines here, and there. And I've got a big old grid. Right? That is a grid ordering system simplification of all your previous diagrams. And this is what we call generative design. You've generated this diagram from the aesthetics of this previous layout sheet. That, you're going to transfer this pattern to two sheets of paper. That pattern gets transferred to two sheets of paper. You may want to put some graphite behind this, some soft pencil, and you can transfer it, or you can use a pen or coke with the cardboard and create the grid. That's your cutout plan. Do it twice, that's your cutout plan. It's going to give you a ton of puzzle pieces to work with. Okay. This is a half scale model. I love it. <laughs> it's cute. It's exactly half scale. But all of these grid pieces become individual pieces of cardboard that you can then assemble into this thing. They're predetermined. So, they're, so make small ones, make big ones. Because then you combine them together to create the structure of the course. There are foreign objects in this, right? This is a funnel. This is a ramp. This became a soup can. <laughs> the ping pong ball hit the suit can and made a sound, but it bounced it just a certain way. There's different foreign objects that can be integrated into this into this grid, right? So this is like what is what is the matrix? Okay. But all of these pieces came from this layout. Remember, you transfer this grid to two sheets of cardboard, same size. That's your material budget. Okay, that's your material budget.
So every single piece here has a role to play in terms of how it can help stabilize the structure. Foreign objects, foreign materials, suit cans, railing, dowel rod, funnel, um, other found objects like this wonderful stuff, <laughs> right? Do not count against or for your material budget, okay? They can be integrated into the construct and not count against the budget. I just want you to use all of the cardboard because every piece of cardboard can have a role in adding to the structure and stabilizing the structure. You have three balls. They may not all have the same experience. Okay. Take the three balls down to my office, AB330. There are two projects there that I've already shown you. And test those projects with the three different balls. You'll see that something is a little bit different for the metal ball than it is for the foam ball for the paper. Right? So those have different opportunities for, for different experiences for the three balls. Okay? Right. This is a little bit complicated, so I just wanted to take you through this. In the event that I'm not well after my first injection, I am getting inoculated. My first inoculation is on Tuesdays, tomorrow. So in the event that I'm not well on Wednesday, I want to take you through this. Okay? All right. Any questions? Big sheet of vellum. <laughs> Big sheet of vellum. Respond to different verbs that are in the Richard Serra verb list and or verbs that are in your Invisible Cities text. Create a scenario of what the ball can do relative to that verb. Catch, bounce, rotate, drop, deflect, filter, turn, de descend, reflect, drop, contain. Verbs that are from the Richard Serra verb list or verbs that are from your Invisible city. Start to create some, with scrap material, some study models that respond to those verbs and start testing how they might work. And if you want to build a funnel, you might want to test that. If you want to build a bounce, you might want to test that. If you want to build a plinko, that might, might be something you might test. And then draw them on this sheet of paper in either plan or section view loosely, okay, nice and loosely, so that they start to occupy the whole paper. Lay a piece of trace over that, and you're going to simplify those diagrams in the form of a grid. You're going to lay a grid over what you see there, and simplify, 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 basically laying an ordering system over those diagrams. This grid, you know, you're going to apply this grid twice onto standard card. Do this twice. You may want to put pencil behind this line, and then you can transfer the line on the track. Or you can take a pen and poke the edges and then line them up. Do that twice on standard cardboard. That becomes your puzzle. It's a cutout plan. Okay? You cut out those pieces and start to build your construct. This is a half-scale version of it. Traveling salespersons used to carry half-scale versions of furniture <laughs> and sell it door-to-door. -door. They're so cute and so clever. Anyway, <laughs> but this becomes your cutout plan for the card. You do this twice. You have to use all of the card. Foreign materials like funnels and, and, and dowel rod and this was a soup can <laughs> or this really great channel stuff does not count towards your material. Every piece of cardboard has to be used to help strengthen and shore up the project in some way. Okay? Okay. I'm summarizing twice. I think that was helpful. <laughs> okay? All right? So, so that, that constitutes how you'll move forward in this next couple of days. Glue down everything in your phone. Yes? Oh, I have a question about the uh, Indian and Yep. So, with all the go through the top, and people can't the yes. contract is made, so it has to go into the bottom. Yes. Well, they all flow in. Yeah. In some fashion, yes. Remember from the video, they all kind of float into the phone. Mm -hmm.
So you have to go ahead and glue everything down. You may want to put a layer of cardboard underneath your foam to strengthen it. And also because you may want to put down a through in order to build up. These are some dynamics. Putting foam, putting a dowel rod on foam doesn't work so well. <laughs> Sending dowel rod through foam and connecting to something. Just in terms of building up from this. This illustrates what your next couple of days will be. There's a checkpoint on the 29th, and then I've extended the project until the 7th. Okay, so you have a little bit of wiggle room for Easter. A little bit of wiggle room there. And then I'm, I've got to look at the BCM uh, calendar as well. So it's basically just doing diagrams for BCM. Yes. Okay, so like the whole project will be through the 7th? Yeah. Yes. There's, there's some wiggle room there for Easter. Yeah. So I'm starting to do Wednesday? Yep. Is this? No. Strong? That's. No, that's no this one's the just DCM. It's just DCM diagramming. You're looking at diagram types in Frank Chang's text, and as described in the video. And then you are making a series of diagrams inspired by your invisible city. One each. <laughs> okay. Are you ready to test? Yes. Shortly? Yeah. Okay. All right. Question about what you just said. Yep. So I went by a three-day watch the movie video where you demonstrated. Yep. And